In this video, we're going to focus on how we can color the scales in the moment we hover over specific bars here. And you can see here, the colors are all changing nicely and they're matching with the border color of the bar. So let's start to explore how to do this. So let's start to explore how to change the on hover color of the x-axis labels. So first of all, what we want is to get on chartjs3.com, getting started, to get the link or to get the default code. Make sure you, you can find this link, by the way, also in our description box, so you can just search it in there and just copy this entire chunk of code here. And if you want to understand that, make sure you watch this video that explains it all. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paste that in there, cut this out, and put in here the new title, save that, refresh, there we are. So now we have this, and what we want to do now is we want to make sure that this uh, canvas is being recognized when we create a function because I need to create an independent function here. So what I will do is I will scroll down all to the bottom and go into here in my chart, cut out this, I'm going to say ctx, all right, and then here I'm going to say constant ctx equals this specific uh, canvas with this ID name. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that when we hover over this or more specifically, we're not even hovering, we're doing a mouse move. So we get every coordinate every time we moved our mouse. So we're doing that one and uh, to make sure that the hover effect or the mouse move effect is being recognized the moment we are on here. To do this, we have to do this or else it will not work. So then what I want to do here is a function. And this function, basically what it does is the following. We can say here mouse move function because it is really focused on mouse move or let's say handler. And we say here mouse move so you might say uh, what's the difference between this and a uh, on hover the on hover is basically on the canvas element itself which is fine but the issue is when you are on here it doesn't see it as something different because we're still on the canvas the moment we move the canvas away or when we are away from the canvas is basically on everything outside of the canvas we don't want that because as you can see our hover effect here or at least this tooltip is based on are we on a certain coordinate, yes or no? And that's why we need the mouse move. And later on I will show you exactly what I'm talking about. So we have this here, and what I want to do here now, just very simple, I want to activate this function. I want to say ctx, which is referring to this, and then we're going to say here, uh, on mouse move, so on mouse move, we want to trigger this function. Once I did this, I can do here console log, and say mouse move, and then save that, refresh, re and then all right. So once I did this, you can see here now, if I move this, look what has happened. We're getting all these coordinates and the most important coordinates will eventually be, uh, I have to see, I guess it's some, or it's the offset or the other one or this one here, doesn't matter. We don't have to learn these items because we have a special command in ChartJS that we can use. However, the most important thing is to understand that what we need to compare is R x and y values, then eventually we have to see are we within this specific uh, border area or these specific, specific pixels. If so, show the tooltip or in our case, show the color. If not, once we move away from it like this, then remove the color. So that's what we're going to do here. And that's basically the entire structure of working. So because we don't have to use a special uh, or we don't have to create our own function, we are going to use a specific function here. So I'm going to say a constant points equal. And then what I'm going to use is a built-in function in chart here. So we're going to say in my chart, which is basically here, this specific item. And then we say a dot get elements at event for mode. And basically this says do something based on the event, which is our mouse move. We want to do or get a specific element. We want to trigger something. So what, how is this trigger work? But based on the mouse move and then what are the conditions on nearest meaning that when we are it will get the nearest item to show which is basically similar to the tooltip when we are here it will look what's the nearest uh, element regarding to the mouse where the mouse is on position and then in this case of course is the purple one however we want to make it more specific by saying here inter intersect and this intersect equals true. And of course, this must be, before I forget that, hold on. We have to make sure that we have here curly brackets. All right, so we say 
intersect through meaning an intersect reference to once you cross it so think about a crossing or a intersection on the road you have two streets or two two roads that are crossing each other and that's an intersection so basically intersect would mean once i'm with my mouse and i'm crossing that specific element border at that moment it would trigger this so that's what we want to have as well for our coloring of the skills so once we have this what i want to do here is a comma and then i'm going to say a true and then we have the function working so now if i do your console log so here the points save that refresh and now we have this and hold on i'm going to remove the mouse move event save that refresh all right so now you can see here but this is still an array that's blank but the moment i'm on here and if i scroll down well let me refresh you will see it if i scroll down you can see here the moment we are on a specific item it will show nicely and then what it shows is not only the thing because that's what we really need we need to show here the data set index and the index itself the index refers to which element are we on. In this case, we're on element index three, but this is from data set number zero. And this information is crucial for us because we want to know on which item are we hovering or which element and what is the color with that. And now we have this nicely. So what we want to do, of course, now, first of all, is to get that specific item. So I'm going to click here and see here. So you can see here the data set. So we're going to grab this data set. And what I want here is the following. I can say here constant data set. And this data set equals points. And then here index zero. Remember, this is index zero. And then dot that. All right. And, one, and what we want to do as well is the same, but then specifically for the data point or the index itself. So it's a index. So now if I grab this put it in there, save that, refresh, move over it, all right. You see we get an error, don't worry about that, but you can see you know zero, which is the data set. So if we do data point, save that, refresh, we get six, five, four, all right. So we get this, but why do we get this error? And the reason why we get this error is because it says undefined. And the reason why it's undefined is because the points is only when there's an array, when there is something, if there's none, it's basically undefined. So what we need to do here is to create an if statement. And this if statement will just validate if points has a length of at least one item. And if that is the case, we want to do whatever we do here. So I'm going to put this in there. And then save this, refresh. Now we have six, no errors anymore. We get all these values. Beautiful. So now this works. So now we have this part. So the next part is eventually is to get the so-called border colors. To do this, we're going to just go for my chart, basically, and then for my chart, we can go directly to the data, and in data, we can grab here the border color. So I'm going to grab this now. So in here, we're going to say constant, and this will be the constant of border colors. And these border colors will be my chart dot data dot data sets, and then here the index will be which one data set here that whatever we hover on top of and then we say it dot border color and the index of that one is of course the data point so the moment we do this we should be able to extract now do a console log a nice border color value save that refresh then we hover over you can see here now we get all of these colors depending on where we hover on that's the color we get all right, so this means that now we are very close to what we need. So now what I want to do here is the following. First of all, in this if statement here, or at least here outside the if statement, we're going to create an array. This constant will be called the color, I'll just call it the color array. You can give it anything you want. And basically, this will be used for the coloring of the labels. And let me show you this before we continue on. In the scales, we want to change the colors here. So we're going to say in the scales for the X, Let's say your ticks and the ticks we're going to say colors or color and then in here we could say for example blue if you do this and save that refresh we get all this blue but let me show you a nice trick here we can make this an array as well come on and let's make this black save refresh and now what happens basically is the blue and the black and it becomes now a sequence but this would mean that we are now able to give every color a specific or every label an individual color based on that. 
So this here helps us. For now, I'll just put it on the default code, which is hashtag triple six. What is very important is we need to have this array preset. The reason why, if we're going to update it and we don't do this, we might get sometimes a undefined error or, it, or the value will be undefined and so it's going to work. So you need to have this ready so that once we update later on, that it will be recognized. So what I want to do now is basically create a new array, which we have here, the color array, and push the value that the moment we hit the specific color that matches or the index matches the, the, the loop value. In that case, I want to push this border color else. I want to push just the original value of triple six. So what I'm going to do here now is the following. Uh, let's see, we're going to create here a for loop. Let's say here, let i equals zero. And this i equals zero, we're going to say i loop this as long as, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab uh, the data set, the specifically the border color, that would be fine. And we say dot length. So this is very important, but this here, we can set this on, uh, well, this one is fine here. So we, we want to loop this data set here as long as it's and keep on looping it based on the length. So then, once I did this, I want to say i++. Plus plus. And then, what we can do here is the following. I'm going to say here, color. And then we say here, array dot push. So basically, what we're doing now is a push method. And we're going to push the specific value if a condition is true and push that into this color array. So what I realize here, I need to, before I even do this, we need to make an if statement. This if statement is very straightforward. And it's basically the following. We say if, let's say data point, which is the data, as you can see here, the data point itself, equals strict with the i. So if that is matching, that will mean that if you hover over whatever the number would be here, if that is correct with the color here, or at least with the i, then we want to do the following. I'm going to grab this here, put that in there. Say push, and what are we going to push? Well, we're going to push this border colors or it's this this specific border color i guess we can say that even this border color that would be more accurate specific border color and else if this is not the case what i want to do is very simple put in the default values you can say this dot push then here hashtag triple six there we are semicolon here semicolon there so now we have this here and now what we can do here is basically create here a, a, a save it and refresh. But if I hover over it, of course nothing works yet. Why it doesn't work? It doesn't update. However, we cannot update here. And the reason why is because of our, our effect here of the mouse move, we would be updating too often and then you will get this lag event of the tooltip, especially if the tooltip is still loading and you're trying to move around it will hang around here somewhere because of too many updates. So what we need to do is a trick. So this is really why this is a quite uh, weird workaround. So what we're going to do here is the following. I need to go in here and in here up, we're going to say on Hoover. And then in the on Hoover, what I want to do now is to say context. We're going to create a callback here and this callback will show us a certain value of what we want to do here. And basically you only want to do one thing in here. We're going to say your context dot chart dot update. So we're going to update. We update it from here. Doing this would mean that we don't strain this part here too much. So if I save this, refresh, now if I hover over here, you can see here, all right, doesn't work yet, don't worry. Then what I want to do here is the following. I'm going to go uh, let's see here, we have our for loop. That is all done. And we have the else here. So once we have this, but we also have this if statement here. And this if statement is very important. Why? Because, well, le let me later on show you. First of all, let's do here my chart. And what I want to do now is to assign the new array in here. So let me show you first of all the array before I do anything else. Console log, and then we're going to get this color array here. We're going to hide this one, we don't need this. Save that, refresh. You can see here, look at our array. Our array looks absolutely phenomenal because we grab the right color. 
and all the others are default of triple six. So what I want to do here with this, first of all, we're going to push that one in here. So we're going to say my chart. And we say dot config dot options. And the reason why I'm doing this is what I want to do is I want to update it. But I'm not going to update it below. I will update it through this on hoover effect. So we want to strain our chart. But I need to go here, here, and here specifically. So scales x ticks dot color. Options dot scales dot x axis and then dot ticks dot color and then we say equal to what exactly whatever our array color is. So once I do this and save this refresh, now you can see this changes, this one changes, that one changes, that one changes, there, and there, and there. And you can see here already, I guess it already works nicely as I was expecting that maybe we have to still undo it, but this is already working perfectly. Beautiful. And that's basically how we have to do it. I thought we had to do maybe an if statement as well here for if it would be uh, not the case. In that case, we will go back to its original state, but no need for that. We already have this all working. So basically, this is how you can do it. And I'll be honest with you, this is a bit more, more of a workaround. I'm certain that there's a way to do it within here, although how exactly is still a question mark. So if you enjoyed this video with this coloring, maybe you also want to continue on with making the uh, tooltip itself a color. So for that, I have a specific video how to color the tooltip based on the bar color in a single data set.